Hey, my name is Tasman, and um, today I want to talk about, um, this speech is going to be about numbness, and it's going to be about, um, I want to talk more about how I think, this is my opinion and thoughts of some aspect of the society today is numb. Um, when I say numb, is I'm meaning like the feelings of what we used to have is gone somewhere. And so we're gonna take it slow. So let me start by saying, you know, I'm a Jamaican, but I am an American citizen and I'm grateful to be an American citizen. I'm proud to be an American citizen and happy to be an American citizen. And um, so I have achieved a correct paperwork decades ago and family and stuff and friends. And so East, West, North and South for all my immigrants out there, we're all immigrants and hope we're all watching YouTube. Anyway, um, I just wanna start by saying I am grateful for this country and what it does for us immigrants and whether they can take in a small amount of immigrants at a time the possibility was made for us to be here and i'm grateful for this country so I hope all immigrants out there were working and surviving are grateful for this country that provides for them and their family. So, uh, yes, I wanna talk about uh, numbness. And before I get there, let me get cozy and relax. I remember I used to be at um, an hotel, a resort here in Iris, Turkey, I was working. And um, I was working with a friend from India, from Gujarat. And we would be working in the back of the kitchen around seven to three, or I would get in at five or five to one, we'd get in at somewhere from seven to three. And I remember he had already had his veterinarian degree, but he said he wanted to he didn't want to do veterinarian, he didn't want to be around animals. And, you know, I kind of inquire why he didn't want to be around animals. And, he, and then you get the veterinarian degree, and he's like, um, you know, it's something he, had to, he did at the time he thought he was interested in it. But anyway, the point to what I'm getting is, he said to me, he wanted to work in computers. He wanted to sit like he's in an office and work on computers and just don't have to do such a job that he does not like doing, something that he don't like doing. And so he started going to, you know, school, even class. And at that time, I didn't too much take in consideration for what he was really saying, you know, about he was determined and this, he was coming to a conclusion of what he wanted to do. I was always, you know, the only thing I knew how to do was to work and work and work, you know, um, physical labor and stuff. And at the time I had about two or three vehicles, so um, he didn't have a, a car, so I told him he could, you know, I had a minivan, I think, and I told him he could drive it. But anyway, he drove the van and, you know, but my point is he wanted to to be something. He wanted to be something besides working in the kitchen and doing that. He wanted to be working in computers. And so that's what he's doing right this day. And so I think to myself, years after like 
what could I be doing that I would really love to be doing? And so I think this is something I'd love to do, you know, to inspire people and, you know, give them information and just something that somebody can look forward to listening to and some they can look forward to you know getting thoughts and ideas from so now he's working i think in he was a con he was a some he was a it tech for the casino at some point and then he traveled away and i think he's continually doing some form of it work just like he said he wanted to do anyway now i want to give you some more information about you know myself i was originally born in jamaica and um i was uh, i was originally born in jamaica and <laughs> i had a interesting childhood but i no regrets you know it was all interesting to me i i remember at one point i would as it is it at somewhere in my teens or in, not in my teens in like eight nine ten years old i remember i would um i would imagine so much in the daytime i would, I would just be imagining a lot and so i used to wonder what what makes why why i imagine so much you know um my imagination was just i it was to a point to where i like i i had to stop it like not i couldn't control it like i would just be imagining a lot so at you know that was age 10 8 9 10 somewhere there i could remember you know because we had to go to the farm and it was quite a walk. So, you know, I'd walk a few miles and stop and start imagining again and and walk some more and my imagination would just, and so <laughs> my imagination would take me to some places that like it didn't stop at one thought, it just went on at more continuous, continuous, imagination so you know that was kind of interesting to me at some at one point until I tried to I tried to block it out because I was thinking there was something going on that I didn't understand so anyway yeah we um I was living in Kingston with my my aunt and my mom I call her my mom and um we travel changes location a lot a little bit she's a designer and stuff like that and so it was interesting you know i seen a lot there and i just figure you know i wanted to make a difference not only for me but also for my family my uh, my grandfather was I would listen to stories from my grandfather and he was he was of a he was of some kind of a, a strong generation some because his middle name was Victor and so that gave me the impression of like a Vic you know Victor or something strong and uh, an iconic person which he was because he had estates, trucks, and farm, huge plantation and stuff like that. So, but I didn't spend really a lot more time with him. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother, which she was, um, she was very high colored and she's very determined. She never said much. She never wouldn't talk a lot, but she's very determined. and. I hang out with her a lot. She tell me a lot of stories from her childhood and growing up and her growing up. And, you know, we got into talking so much, she and I, till, you know, she would, um, 
give me, to tell me things about, you know, you know, the process of dealing with the death of her husband and what she had to do and how they had to take care of the body and where the body would sleep. And so I, we, I grew up in that same, <laughs> I grew up in that same house and it's, I wasn't, you know, scared of, you know, what ever was around because, you know, I didn't to worry about that either. But it was really interesting to me when, you know, she would tell me about um, the bombing of her body and how they had to clean the body down. And she explained to me there was no refrigeration for a corpse at that time and those times. So she kind of, they had to like clean the body up and somehow stuff it with cinnamon and clove and, you know, other spice, um, other spice herbs and, and, um, other spices and bushes and stuff like that. Moon, mainly clove and nutmeg and cinnamon and stuff like that. That would kind of keep and preserve the body from starting to smell. But it would be wrapped so tight to be like a mummy wrap. And so she would take me back to places like that and times like that. And it was interesting because I would sit there <laughs> And I would listen to it and I really, I enjoy listening to it and want it more. So, you know, it, you know, I mean, she even take me back to about, you know, when she lose her brother and by, um, by a lake and stuff like that. So she really takes me way back. And, you know, her mother lived to see 104. And so she was not only a strong woman, she was determined and she was, she enjoyed writing cursive and, um, and she had a ritual where she prayed every night. So, you know, time with her was very interesting. But, however, I got to get back to my, uh, <laughs> Were we really gonna numbness, you know? Um, numbness. Uh, so I really feel like, I really feel and think sometimes like, as a, not as a society, but there's, there's sets and parts of a society that I feel like it's it's growing number and the people are growing more numb in different areas of, you know they're just being more numb than more more energetic and more more caring for each other not necessarily energetic but more caring for each other you know I think it's uh you know you might say who am I and like you know don't ask me that, but my thoughts is what I think is most important, what I'm about to say. Everything has changed so fast that I think, like, everything's changed so fast. So I think where everything's changed so fast, it did not give us as a people the time to, to assess ourselves for the forward where technology is taking us. So it's kind of like we're the prototype of technology. We're just the prototype. And so what we constantly do is try to chase, it's kind of like we're constantly chasing a machine down and we're trying to keep up with the machine. But in doing that, also put that caring and love inside of society in the back seat and it's 
it's um it's it's showing in different areas and different ways and so as individual and as leaders i think you know it's it's going to be really important to see that side of how the society is starting to becoming more numb and more number with their feelings and their you know with their feelings and just how they operate and how they do things once you could it was a bit different because you would have like a mom at home see it would a mom would be at home and then a child would be just getting off school and then the mom would be the, at home to receive the child and then that metric and that chemistry of a foundation of that togetherness would start building right there with with joy and that would open the gate for the rest of the family to come into that evening and that would that would set the stage for how the outcome of the evening would be. But now things is a bit different. And I'm not saying mothers are not doing what they're supposed to do. I'm not saying none of that stuff. I'm just saying it's the numbness that's within, within us, or no, within or on us is, is caused that change in the all sold if you notice there's so much shooting and you know how much of that we used to have you know before now you know now it's more it's like it's it's more prevalent or it's more it's just more more than normal than for some kind of shooting to happen at the school, some kind of shooting to be, you know, killing 15, 10, 20 people at the theater, you know, this kind of stuff, which wasn't there before. And so somewhere along the line, something, that numbness had creeped into the society, it creeped into undetected, and now it's there and it's like spreading. So we have to find a way out to sort that out and, you know, kind of help to control that. So like I said, you know, the metric would build right there once a kid get home with the mom there. Somebody was there to receive the child. It's kind of like a love was already had home, a home. And when he got there, that love even grow, grow more. And then that opened a gate for the rest of the family that was going to come in to the home that evening after work or wherever they're from. So a foundation was already there. So that would, and that's what would continue the evening. And that would shape the evening and the night for the family. So if you had, if you picture that kind of scenario happening and then work with that kind of scenario, you could see how if there is 20 house on the block using that same kind of metric, that's kind of, you know, then at least 15 out of the 20 house, you know, whole would have not have that any much violence or you know, it'd be more of a togetherness, or for more of a, you know, it'd be more of a whole. So if you can have that picture of that household of being a more of a whole, there'll be more likely, there'll less likely be anyone from this 20 household or 15 would go out and do a spree and a shooting and killing 20, 15 people. So, I am not saying it has to go back to where mom is staying at home. I'm just saying it's an idea and maybe something can change. Maybe we can work and doing something about it.
but this is just a part of my um my numbness video so i will give you some more in the next couple of days my name is taz east west north and south that was my first topic a numbness i hope to see you back again remember subscribe and like and um, hit the button <laughs> peace out